If you're still relying on gut feelings or trick interview questions to determine who to hire for your business, you're doing it wrong. Instead, you should build a test task to prove who actually has the skills to grow your business and who does not. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over exactly how you can build a test task so you can see who's gonna grow your business and who shouldn't even get a second round interview. Before we build a test task, we need to know the best place to actually put that test task in the recruitment process. A lot of times business owners just throw it in the application before the first interview, after the first interview, before the second interview, kind of all over the place. That's not ideal. We want a systematic approach to the recruitment process. The best place to put a test task is after that first round interview or that screening interview. Put it here before that final interview. Sometimes people like to put the skill test or the test task after this final interview. I like to do it before. It kind of allows me to put in another step before I'm spending final round interviews. I'd much rather you know, spend less time interviewing in those final rounds, save time with people proving themselves that they're competent or they're not competent with the skill test. You can put it after, that's totally fine. But what I found after hiring hundreds of different candidates for hundreds of different clients, the skill test or the test task is best utilized after that first round or screening interview. At this point, we know where the test task should go. It's after that first round or that screening interview and before that second round of interviews. The next step is figuring out what to actually include inside of the test task to make it real. The easiest way to create a test task is to review what the new hire is gonna be doing in the very first 30 days of the role. Usually there's a main task that they're gonna be performing. So if they're like an e-commerce email designer, obviously their main task is gonna be designing emails. So you give them a test task that's focused on email design. It sounds super simple, but people often overlook and complicate uh, test tasks and just kind of add in a bunch of extra fluff that doesn't actually pertain to the role that they're hiring for. This is gonna lead to a lot fewer candidates completing the task because you're gonna be seen as incompetent because you don't know how to set up a, a proper gating system or test task for the role. And basically what happens is you have to go back and source more candidates and spend more time in the recruitment process instead of having a very streamlined recruitment process. So you need to make sure that the test task actually only pertains to what the person's gonna be doing in those first 30 days or what the actual main job of the role is. In the case of the e-commerce email designer, you can basically just give them a creative brief or whatever format that you give to your current email designers to complete designs and then ask them to create a welcome flow or just a few emails. Make sure that it's something that's possible to be completed under 48 hours. You don't want this to take all week. You wanna do it quickly and move efficiently to the next stage of the interview process. Another tip with test tasks is to actually compensate or pay the candidates for their work. Because when you implement a test task, there's often a lot of drop off. You're probably gonna wonder why. You're gonna send out that test task to 10 final candidates and only five are actually gonna do it. The reality is these candidates already have full-time incomes, full-time jobs, so their needs are met. And many other agencies and, and companies hand out these different test tasks that are very complex. The candidate completes them, but then they never hear back from the company. And so the candidate basically feels pretty wary when they see these other test tasks and there's not compensation. So unfortunately, that's just the game. It's best to actually pay these people to get a higher completion of the test task. You don't want the true person that you would actually wanna hire not take you seriously and kind of just blow you off instead of completing that test task. So if you have to pay you know, 15, 20 bucks to get a test task completed, in the grand scheme of things, if they're really that person you wanna hire, it doesn't matter in the long run. And the final tip I have about test tasks is to put a strict time limit on the test task. If you don't set a strict time limit, you may end up waiting five or more days just for someone to complete a test task that could have taken less than 48 hours to complete. What you should do is after the first interview, send an email saying, hey, you've been selected for the test task. Please confirm receipt of this email. I'll be sending the test task by the end of the day or the end of the week. And once you get this email with the test task, you're gonna have 48 hours to complete it. You get the person to confirm that they got that email and then they know that they've been selected to that next round of tasks or next round in the interview process, and they're gonna be awaiting your task. So when you send that test task, you can use an email tracker. So you can tell if this person actually opened that email. So you're sending them and saying, hey, you're gonna have 48 hours from receipt of this second email to complete this test task. And so you need to know when this person actually opens that email. So you could use like Snob.io or HubSpot. There's a bunch of different tools for that type of stuff. So you send that email, they open it, and they have 48 hours from receipt of that email and you can tell when they opened it. You don't want to run into an issue where someone's like, oh, I didn't see it over the weekend. Can I have two more days to finish it? Or someone just maybe being dishonest and it taking them three days to finish it instead of that actual time frame. So just to recap the tips on the test task, you need to place that test task after that first round interview, that screening interview, 
before the second round or after that second round interview as a final qualifier in the interview process. Don't put it in some sort of application. You're not gonna get many applicants. You need to kind of control that lead flow and treat it like a funnel. So you have all the people at the top, they're kind of filtering down at each step and you get to a final stage of interviews where they've already done the test tasks and it's typically you know two, three people who are your top choices. That's how you make a decision. You don't wanna invert the funnel and then suddenly have only getting a couple applicants because as you go down through the other stages of the funnel, you're just not gonna have any applicants. And you're gonna be wondering, okay, maybe this place that I'm you know, sourcing from isn't the right place, maybe the salary's broken, but actually you're just going about it the wrong way. The test task should be something that would be the main activity of the candidate or what they're gonna do in the first 30 days of being hired. For example, the e-commerce email designer, they're gonna be designing. So designing a couple emails or a welcome flow would be a very, very good test task. Let's say they're like an appointment setter, maybe some mock prospecting, generating a list of maybe 10 leads that could be ideal client profiles for you. So you can just kind of think or see how they think about making decisions in the outbound prospecting space. Or maybe they're writing some cold email scripts or a sequence of cold emails. You can determine their English level. You can determine what type of language they use, if they're actually successful with that outbound stuff. Those are two really good test tasks for the e-commerce email designer and then the uh, SDR or appointment setter. The third tip is compensating the candidates to encourage the completion. They're just as busy as you. You don't wanna have a bunch of drop off where a bunch of people aren't completing the test tasks just because they're not taking you seriously because you're another agency that's asking them to complete two days of work for free. And the final tip is make sure that the test task is completed with 48 hours of receiving the test task email by using an email opening tracker on the email you send. So basically you have two emails. After they do really well with that first round interview, you say, hey, I'm gonna be sending you a test task once you receive this test task, you have 48 hours to complete it. So they already know that you're gonna be sending them that test task. That second email that you send with actual test task instructions, that has that email tracker on it. So you can actually see that time when they open the email and give everyone that same shot of 48 hours to complete that test task. If you want to know how to find the best talent on the globe, go over to zaboda.io, look through the case studies. If it makes sense, then book a time to chat.